For the harvest of the Spirit, thanks be to God. For the good we all inherit, thanks be to God. For the wonders that astound us, for the truths that still confound us, but most of all that love has found us, thanks be to God. Good morning, church. My name is Lauren Helger, and I'm the pastor here at Hubbard United Methodist Church here in beautiful Park Rapids, Minnesota. And I am here today with our, our pianist, Terry, and our, uh, and our tech team. Well, actually, one of our tech team, Jeff, and, and our liturgist today is Ernie Kuhn. And on behalf of each of us here and our entire congregation, I would just like to welcome you as you joined us here on, uh, to worship with us this morning. For first-time guests that are worshiping with us today, we just extend a warm welcome uh, to you, and we're delighted that you have chosen to spend this time with us today, because we know that you had choices, and you chose to be a part of this, and so we are so grateful for that. Today, we are going to conclude our sermon series on gratitude and the power of giving thanks. You know, it's been this series where we've been looking specifically at how we give thanks in some of life's most challenging circumstances. Because that's really an important question for the days and times in which we find ourselves living, isn't it? And today, uh, as to start with, I would just like to share a few reasons that I had reason to give thanks this week. And first of all, did you know that we have over a hundred stamped Christmas cards that have been donated so far to Hubbard County Jail Ministry? I mean, folks, that's an amazing response for such an important ministry. And also this week, we mailed out 175 Advent devotionals to folks within our congregation. And I have to say, I'm really excited about this year's devotional. I read the entire thing in one sitting, and it's absolutely wonderful. And I just can't wait to go back and soak in each day during Advent because it's just absolutely wonderful. And so with that, if you are not a member of our congregation and you would like one, they are going to be available next week on our website at www.hubbardumc.org. And you're going to be able to download one there. And if you want an extra one, you can do that as well. And so this week, well, also there are 13 of you who signed up almost immediately to deliver Meals on Wheels for December. And and folks, if you would like to sign up for this, please just email the church office and let us know because this is an ongoing ministry that we do every month and I hope that you're able to be a part of that if that's what you'd like. You know, this last week as well, I received two phone calls and they were about baptisms. One for an adult and one for a young toddler and it's such a hopeful blessing friends to talk about baptizing persons it's into the family of Christ at any age and at any time but especially during this time when people are just struggling to find reasons for hope and so I'm very very happy to have the opportunity to, to do that in the very near future and I just want to share one more blessing that I heard about this week and I know that there has been an awful lot of need in our community for for folks who can't afford Thanksgiving dinners and at Hubbard Church you have stepped in to help through the pastoral discretionary fund and by generous givers that just did it on their own this week seven families that I know of have uh, been blessed by generous givers uh, and I have to say the response of these families has been one of overwhelming gratitude. So this is just a small fraction of what's been happening here at the church just this week and I, and I wanted to say uh, church I'm so proud. I'm so proud of the way that we continue to be the church in our community and in our world as we continue to be in mission together and as my friend Paul says, we, we remain gathered together while we're scattered. And so I'm so glad that you're here. And I invite you now to join me as I offer this morning's call to worship and gathering prayer. Will you please join me? We come together in shared acts of worship and praise to revere and honor our God. We gather together as a community of faith to marvel at the glory and majesty of God. We 
We come together to worship our trustworthy God, who is our true and our only security. We gather as a community of trust, well known through experiencing God's love. We come to be blessed by God, to be still before our God in awed wonder at the daily miracles of God's grace and mercy, which are offered to God's faithful people. We gather as a community of hope because we know that as we are obedient and committed to worship of God, that these actions bring delight to God. Let us pray. In deep gratitude, we come to worship you, O oh God. We recognize you as the source of all goodness and that all good gifts come from you. Gifts like love and peace, joy, patience, kindness, goodness, and gentleness. Today we come with grateful hearts. Not for things, but for who you are. And so we gather to show our gratitude in song and in prayer. Amen. Won't you join me now? for our opening hymn, for the fruits of this creation. And we are going to sing this to the tune of number 688. But we're going to sing for the fruits of this creation. And it's on page 97 if you have that hymn on. Good morning. My name is Arnie Kuhn, and I will be leading you in the prayers of the people and scripture this morning. As we begin to move into our time of prayer together, you should know that we do have a prayer team here at Hubbard, and you are encouraged to send in your prayer requests. You can do that through the church website or contact Pastor Lauren or our parish nurse, Deb Hogginson, or by calling, just calling the church office. And know that our church will be praying for you as soon as we receive these requests. Because we believe that when we pray for one another, we are drawn closer to God and closer to each other. I would now invite you to get into a position of prayer where you are comfortable, where you are seated, where you might free up your hands, close your eyes, take a deep cleansing breath, and let's push away the anxieties and the worries and the stressors that we have in our lives today as we come before our Lord in prayer. Let us pray. God of the living, with all your creatures great and small, we sing of your bounty and your goodness. From the harvest of land and ocean, 
for the cycles of the seasons and in the wonders of each creature, you reveal your generosity. Teach us the gratitude that dispels envy, that we will honor each gift as you cherish your creation and praise you in all times and places, that this day may be holy and good and joyful. And so we pray in gratitude to you, O Lord. Your steadfast love endures forever as well as your faithfulness to all generations. And as this pandemic continues to worsen, we continue to pray for healing for the ill, comfort to the grieving, direction to the lost, serenity to the anxious, and justice to the oppressed. Be with and strengthen and protect our healthcare workers everywhere and make us into instruments of your peace so that we may carry your love into places of despair and doubt. And we pray today, unite us, O oh God. We are called to work together, to rise together, to fly together, to become together, to listen and learn from each other. And so we pray, unite us, O oh God, because we are also a faithful people. As followers of Christ, we are united in you. We are people who are part of something bigger than our differences, bigger than political candidates, bigger than the knots in our stomachs or the smiles on our faces. We are united in Christ, called to follow Jesus in word, thought, and deed, loving and welcoming our neighbors, loving ourselves, and proclaiming love and justice for all God's children regardless of race, age, gender, or political affiliation. And so we pray, unite us, O oh God, in the work before us. Unite us in our calling to commit ourselves even more faithfully to the message of hope. And most of all, God, unite us in our journey as we step beyond the campaign season and into the light that you call us toward. Inspire us always to be your grateful people. Unite us, O God, as we pray together that prayer that Jesus taught his disciples by praying. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our scripture reading today is from 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 2, and chapter 3, verses 9 through 13. Hear the word of our Lord. We always give thanks to God for all of you and mention you in our prayers constantly. And then continuing in chapter 3, How can we thank God enough for you in return, for all the joy that we feel before our God because of you? Night and day we pray most earnestly that we may see you face to face and restore whatever is lacking in your faith. Now may our God and Father himself and our Lord Jesus direct our way to you. And may the Lord make you increase and abound in love for one another and for all, just as we abound in love for you. And may he so strengthen your hearts in holiness that you may be blameless before our God and Father at the coming of our Lord Jesus with all his saints. May God add a blessing to the reading hearing, and understanding of Scripture. Amen. Let me offer this prayer. O oh, gracious God, through the power and gift of your Holy Spirit, stir within our hearts today. Open our hearts and our minds and our ears that we might hear a, a word from you 
Oh God, create in us thankful hearts that we might truly see and experience the world around us ever so differently. In the name of Christ who brings us good gifts, who offers us salvation and love, we give you thanks. Amen. Well, this morning, as I said earlier, we are finishing up in our worship series on gratitude and thankfulness. And surely it's appropriate in this season of Thanksgiving as we stop and we think and reflect and count our many blessings, uh, which we're going to sing about a little bit later in the service. And, and as we conclude this series, I want to offer a thought for our consideration this morning. And the thought is this, that gratitude, I mean, true gratitude from deep down within us, has the power to turn a group of strangers into a genuine community. I mean, gratitude has the power to turn a group of strangers into a genuine community that has compassion and service and love and even into lifelong friends and family. Gratitude has the transforming power that changes how we see people and even to rise above things that once divided us. Let me say that again. True gratitude gives us the ability to rise above those things that even once divided us. You know, I think Paul understood this power of gratitude. Arnie read for us a portion of this in 1 Thessalonians chapters 1 and 3, and Folks, I think that Paul was really onto the power and significance of gratitude here. And not only does Paul offer thanksgiving to the people around him and for God, who's provided all things, not only does he do that in 1 Thessalonians, he does that throughout all of his writings. In fact, I think it would be a good exercise sometimes to go, to go through all of Paul's writings. Paul the Apostle, who's written most of the New Testament and who's written the, uh, the letters to the early Christians, I, I think that it would be a good exercise to read and go through just a portion of the first chapter of each of those letters. And therein you would find that the one thing that is consistent throughout all of Paul's letters is a simple expression of gratitude. I mean, if you, if you were to begin in Romans and, and go through 1st and 2nd Corinthians and then Philippians and then on to Ephesians and Galatians, Colossians, and then, and then on to 1st uh, and 2nd Thessalonians, you would discover very similar words where Paul says just this simple thing. I give thanks, for, or thanks to God for you and for your ministry. Paul was grateful for the people around him, and he knew that each of them had influence in his life, and so he expressed gratitude in a real and sincere way. Now this morning, as we think about the words that were read for us in 1 Thessalonians, I think it's important to know just a few things of, about that letter, about that community of faith. 1 Thessalonians is believed to be the first of Paul's writings. I mean, Paul writes this letter after his first missionary journey. And you may remember, but he writes this letter somewhere around the year uh, 56 CE. And the books in the New Testament, if you didn't realize this or you didn't know, are not in chronological order. In fact, 1 Thessalonians would be among the first uh, epistles or the first letters. And in fact, 1 Thessalonians would be among the first writings in the New Testament, in the entire New Testament. So, Because Paul writes these letters even before the Gospels are written. So this letter, 1 Thessalonians, reflects Paul's understanding of faith in Christ, and he expresses his gratitude to the people of Thessalonica. Now furthermore, to better understand uh, Thessalonica and the community of Thessalonians, I think it's, it's important to remember that Paul had a major challenge in this community among his travels. And, and, we, and we read about it in, in Acts chapter 17. And so I'm going to read just a portion of that for us this morning to give us a sense of what Paul had gone through and the closeness uh, of his ties with the people of Thessalonica. 
So I'm going to read from Acts 17, verses 1 through 9. And now listen to what the writer tells us in in Acts and about Paul's journey. So it says, after Paul and Silas, now Silas was one of Paul's companions accompanying him on the missionary journeys. So, So after Paul and Silas had passed through certain cities, they came to Thessalonica where there was a synagogue of the Jews. And Paul went in, as was his custom. I mean, Paul would typically go into a synagogue, as he did on this particular occasion. And he did that for three different Sabbath occasions to argue with them from the scriptures, explaining and proving that it was necessary for the Messiah to suffer and to rise from the dead. And and he said this, this is the Messiah. Jesus, whom I am proclaiming to you. So Paul was proclaiming the message of Jesus, his death and resurrection, and and verse 4 then continues to say, Now some of them were persuaded, and they joined Paul and Silas, as did great many of the devout Greeks, and not a few of the leading women. But the Jews became jealous, and with the help of some ruffians in the marketplaces that They formed a mob, and they set the city in an uproar. So so the people were so upset by what Paul said that they formed a mob, and and they created disturbance within that community. And now while they were searching for Paul and Silas to bring them out to the assembly, They attacked Jason's house, and Jason was hosting Paul and Silas at the time. And when they could not find them, they dragged Jason and some of the other believers before the city authorities, shouting, hey, these people who have been turning the world upside down have come here also, and Jason has entertained them as guests in his house. So they're all acting contrary to the decrees of the emperor, saying that there is another king named Jesus. I mean, the people and the city officials were disturbed when they heard this. And after they had taken bail from Jason and the others, they let them go. So Paul and Silas, having been now smuggled out of town to avoid confrontation, they began to look for ways that would allow their ministry to grow. And it seems here that there was this strong group of laity, committed Christians, in the community of Thessalonica. And so when we read Paul's words that say, thank you, Paul had good reason for giving them thanks, because they literally saved his hide. I mean, they came to his rescue. And so when Paul says, thank you, he really means thank you. And so the words that Arnie read for us when Paul says we give thanks to God for all of you, constantly mentioning you in our prayers, and then in the third chapter when he says, how can we thank God enough for you in return for all the joy that we feel before our God because of you? I mean, Paul understood early on in his first missionary journey the importance of the laity in that congregation, and he understood the importance of the people of Thessalonica. Because they came together. They rallied. They helped to smuggle he and Silas out of town, and and they set him free so that he could continue on in his mission. And then he expresses that gratitude for the laity of that congregation. Well, Dr. Amit Sood is the director of research in the complementary and integrative medicine program at the Mayo Clinic. And he has done a lot of research into gratitude. I mean, who knew that the Mayo Clinic was researching gratitude? And he suggested a a practice that I've decided to implement in my own life. I mean, most of us wake up in the morning and we begin thinking about all the things that are bothering us and what we need to do and accomplish that day, which is often what wakes me up in the wee hours of the morning, including this morning. But what Dr. Sood suggests to us is that we start each day with gratitude. 
to think of five people in your life for whom you might be grateful for. I mean, picture their faces and and send them a silent thank you. Or you could decorate your bedroom wall with their pictures so that they're the first images that you see each morning. Or you take a post-it note and write the word grateful with their name on it and you put it on your bathroom mirror. You know, I happen to keep a church directory in my, in my uh, office on my desk at home, and, and the first thing that I do is I randomly open this, this directory up each day, and I give thanks for the people that I see amongst the pages. And I've even added, I have to say, a few blank pages for all those who are not yet connected to us, uh, but, but it feels like they have a connection to this church because they're tuning in each week now. And in many cases, they're even sending donations and notes of encouragement. You know, friends, this includes each one of you watching today. I thank God for every one of you. And I recognize in my heart committee members, and and I celebrate their ministry, and I I celebrate the ministry of those who mentor and who teach, and those who care for our congregation with their prayers and their concern. And I celebrate the ministry ministry of those who are involved in, in hospitality, and those who've been greeters and readers, and those who have ushered, and And I celebrate and I thank God from the bottom of my heart for the ministry of musicians who who lead us in worship. And and I'm forever grateful for them. And, And I'm grateful for each and every one of you, whether or not you're on a committee and whether or not I've met you or not. Because it is the ministry of all the laity that makes all the difference in the life of the church. You know, it is your voice of love, your voice of passion, your voice of encouragement that truly makes all the difference to this church. You know, in 1997, Fred Rogers was given a Lifetime Achievement Award by the Academy of Motion Pictures that was presented to him at the Daytime Emmy Awards that year. And and he gave an acceptance speech that was unlike any other acceptance speech that I've ever heard. And and I want to remind you of that today. Take a look. Oh, it's a beautiful night in this neighborhood. (laughs) So many people have helped me to come to this night. Some of you are here. Some are far away. Some are even in heaven. All of us have special ones who have loved us into being. Would you just take, along with me, 10 seconds to think of the people who have helped you become who you are? Those who have cared about you and wanted what was best for you in life. 10 seconds of silence. I'll watch the time. whomever you've been thinking about, how pleased they must be to know the difference you feel they've made. You know, they're the kind of people television does well to offer our world. Special thanks to my family and friends and to my coworkers in public broadcasting, family communications, and this academy for encouraging me allowing me all these years to be your neighbor. May God be with you. Thank you very much. You know, I don't think there was a dry eye in that room. You know, church, we don't get to, to where we are by ourselves. I certainly know that I don't. Each one of you, as well as numerous others, both past and present, they've helped me along my journey. And today, I thank God for every single one of you. 
Because life is a gift. This day is a gift. And we didn't do anything to create it or deserve it. It wasn't a guarantee. I mean, we live and we breathe and it's all a gift. And how we respond to that gift, including being grateful, is our gift back to God. Will you please pray with me? You know, let's, let's just take 10 seconds. 10 seconds to think of the people who have helped you to be who you are. The people who cared for you and loved you. Just 10 seconds of silence. You know what? I'll time you. Dear God, help me to be more grateful and to express gratitude to others. Thank you for all the blessings of life. Help us to rejoice always, pray continuously, and give thanks in every situation. Amen. Friends, I am so grateful for you and your participation in worship today. I'm I'm grateful for the people who continue to support this online worship and the ministry of this church. And I'm grateful for those we have never met who who send us gifts and, and notes of encouragement and who are grateful for the impact that this worship experience is having on their lives. And, and also so many of you that just continually... Uh, support the the ministries of this church so faithfully. You know, not only to make worship possible, but also be the hands and feet of Jesus out in this community and into this world. 
And so before I go, I, I just want to give you an opportunity to continue to, to support the ministries and to reflect the gratitude that you have experienced in your life and out into this world. So we do offer a couple of ways to do that. And one is that you can just go on our website at www.hubbardumc.org and just click on Contribute there in the upper right-hand corner. And, and the other is to just simply mail in your check at the address that you see on the screen. You know, I, I can promise you this, that we will be wise stewards of every gift that is graciously sent our way. So I hope that you are able to join us this week on Wednesday evening at 7 p.m. as we are bringing you a special online Thanksgiving Eve worship service hosted by, by Hubbard and Riverside and Calvary churches here in Park Rapids and, and also Bethany and First Lutheran churches in Nevis and Akeley. And we hope that it will be a blessing to you as you navigate through this season of, of pandemic uh, and, and of Thanksgiving. And, and next week, it is, I just have to say, it's hard to believe, folks. I know, it is Advent. We are starting Advent next week, where we will begin a new worship series called Incarnation. And we're going to be taking a look at the names and titles of Jesus, from Messiah and Lord to the light of the world. And it's going to be a beautiful, wonderful holiday season as we look forward to the anticipation of Jesus' birth. And now, as it's time to go, before uh, Terry closes us out with our final hymn this morning, I just invite you, friends, just take the hand of somebody who might be worshiping with you today. And if you're worshiping all alone, uh, just lift your hands up as I am this morning. And knowing that the God who made you and the God who loves you is always reaching out to make a connection in your life. Go forth. And serve God and your neighbor in all that you do. And may God's love be so much a part of your life that those to whom love is a stranger might find in you the most generous of friends. You see, God is with us today. And I believe that everything God has to offer is made available to you, even now in this moment. God won't hold back from you. Just be open to what God wants to do in your life. And you'll find great blessing for today and tomorrow and, and for all that is yet to come. May God's great blessing be renewed in your life again this day. Happy Thanksgiving, everyone. Amen. everyone.